Undead Skin Tone. This is the topic for today. I painted in the last video the horse and today we will do the skin tone of the rider and we'll try to match the color to make them different but still work together. There will be also a part that is in real time so you can see my brush strokes. If you're new to this channel you will discover that I am not entertaining. I will not do fun stuff, jokes and such. This is about learning, about getting better. I like to teach and I like people to learn what I do and do it better themselves. Hopefully better than me at some point. So if you like to become better, this is the channel for you. And if you like the model that I'm painting, there is a Kickstarter going on right now, link in the description. A lot of models there, a lot of paints, and uh, I'm sure you will like it. So, without further ado, let's go and learn! Okay, I start with the Perilene Violet, as you can see, the Phthalo Blue Red Shade, the Oxide Green, an orange from scale, uh, the peach, the shiny skin tone, sorry, the Fabrizio Russo Bone Khaki, and the white. If you don't have the Perilene Violet, you can always use a mix of black plus magenta, okay? It's, uh, it's not that difficult. I like this tone and uh, the fact that it's a little bit shiny, so maybe you can just add a uh, a little of satin medium for example. In this case I used the, the Magic Mix by Josonia that makes the paints a little bit more easy to blend and more shiny. I'm creating this desaturated dark purple mix as a base for the for the undead skin of this this rider. The difficult part about painting an undead skin tone, or actually any skin tone, is to match it with all the other colors that are going on in the figure. So in this case I am using a, a, a tone that is a dark tone, but it's very similar to all the other tones that I actually used everywhere. So this is why they, they match a little bit right away. But I still needed to make it different enough. And this is why in the palette you'll see, mm, differently from the other episodes, the presence of an oxide green. I wanted it to be more greenish than the rest, being still similar, but different from the horse, that is more on the blue side. And to avoid this horse, uh, well, this rider, to be too different from the horse, I still used some blue in the base of the skin tone and uh, in other passages too. Coherence in the color is quite important to avoid clashing tones. This is why I'm doing this. As you can see, I'm adding exactly more blue in the mix and creating a, a bluer variation on the on the skin tone. I mean, it's still in the purple, but bluer than the other one. Also, later on, there will be a segment in real time, so you can see my brush strokes a little bit, a little bit better and have um, a feeling of how I paint in, uh, in real time. It's, it's impossible to do it in a, in a YouTube video, otherwise this video would last a decade. <laughs> but I, I slow down some parts so you can, you can understand better. So I'm creating variations somewhere in the, in the shadow parts with this bluer tone to tie it better with the horse. You know, in um, 75 millimeter or bigger pieces, tone variation is very important. A, th a thing that I often see 
and I'm sometimes a culprit too of this, is a lot of linear highlighting, let's say. Meaning that you have only one tone in an area and you highlight that tone from dark to light, usually towards white, and everything is very linear. And this is um, this is called a tonal scale or a, a tonal highlighting. And it's actually a, a mistake. It's it makes the pieces very very boring and very um, predictable. Let's say very unrealistic. Maybe you are after uh, an effect that is not realistic. Huh? There is nothing wrong with it. But it's very it's very plain as an effect, and light usually doesn't affect stuff in that way. So the result you get is is very cartoonish, if you if you want. I personally don't like that much. Uh, I know it's all the rage in uh, stuff like Golden Demon. They actually reward this a lot, but from an artistic point of view, is a it's a, it's a mistake. If you look at canvases, you will uh, you will see that very rarely this is a thing. So having tonal variations, having non-linear highlights, meaning that you highlight not towards white, but you highlight each color <coughs> towards the color of the light, shifting it as it needs to be shifted to be coherent with the environment is a much more rewarding approach it's more difficult it's way more difficult of course because you know having a scale of a dark green plus a lighter green plus a little bit of white it's super easy to do but controlling the palette is more difficult and honestly in some contests especially the more geared toward gaming ones they completely forget about this because to, to understand it you need a little bit of an art background. So yeah, keep this in mind. It could be it could be very interesting. As you can see, to to do this in this piece, I'm creating highlights that are in two different directions. One is more bluer, the other is more warmer. So I have different grays to create this undead skin tone. Uh, a trick for making an undead look in an undead is to avoid yellows mostly, so I don't have it in my palette. The um, shiny skin tone is mostly a, an orange plus a white actually. So um, I'm creating these two different, different highlights and I'm using it on the on the various part of the piece to, to give subtle variations. And in a bigger piece this is important. This is the first time that you see me painting a bigger scale model. Um, so it's, uh, it, it's more complex than a smaller one, of course. Yeah, as you see I added even more blue because I wasn't satisfied enough with the with the difference. You can push this, these two differences um, a lot more than I did. I like, I personally, this is um, personal choice, I like subtle um, stuff, subtle differences, one that you can appreciate the more you look at a model, but other people prefer to be more, more obvious and there is nothing wrong with it. So you can make these colors more different than each other. But remember that greys will always share one element between them, that is the black and the white, the grey, so they will never look out of place next to each other, because they are more similar than different. So you can play with this to your advantage. So what I'm doing, what, I, what I'm thinking, is to put the bluer highlight in the lower areas or in the, in the more hidden area of the skin 
and the other one, the more warm one, in the more obvious, in the more obvious parts, so that you can still have um, a plane that is full in light, but with a difference in tone. Similar value, though. You see, I, I went for the upper part with the more uh, warm grey while I left the, the lower one with a, with a colder grey. Keep doing these split highlights, trying to have uh, the same value but different colors in my palette, and keep going up in light. Don't be scared of going very strong in the in the light department for two reasons. The, the first reason is that contrast is always appreciated and very important, so it's, it's almost never enough. And you can always tone it down later. And the second reason, that is the more obscure one if you want, is that the paint is transparent and being transparent it means that to reach the the level of um, value that you see in the palette to reach it on the model it takes a lot of passages so the first time you you do it it's not going the full extent of the light anyway so don't be scared Keep doing it because it, it will be needed on the model. And this, this is also important for the color matching. I made a video on color matching that you can, uh, you can find in the channel. But in general, what you want to do when you try to color match is not to color match the palette, the color in the palette, but you need to color match the color on the model. This also means that sometimes when you do a, you create a mix that is matching whatever you need to do and you apply it on the model, it will not look exactly the same because the color that is below is still showing. So sometimes you need a lot of passages to really match. I'm also creating noise, as you can see with the brush. I'm creating non-linear highlights. Non, I'm not doing lines. I'm creating noise, I'm creating dots, I'm creating little lines. I'm jumping here and there to do a, a more realistic, a more realistic surface that is not boring to look at. Because reality is almost never linear. This is a concept we created with the industrial design. But before before that, we even in painting, no, no one was thinking as a single color for a surface. Because nature is not like that. Nothing is of a single color. So remember to, to do this, to create noise, create chaos. Now with a with a very thin glaze I'm equalizing things. It's a little bit of blending, let's say. But blending doesn't mean that everything needs to be smooth. Differences are good, are good to look at. They are very, very fun and... Uh, and never boring.
as you can see the um, the two colors are very very different I, I was checking how much of a difference they have to see if they work together or not a thing that will tie them up will be the um, the color of the orange light but the um, some some more blue in this skin was was needed to make it more, more similar to the horse not not the same but, but more similar so i created this this color this blue color to to make some some elements on the on the skin look more similar to the horse so that your brain will be a little bit tricked so i i added some some of the blue here and there and in the front and now in the back i'm also creating veins very thin veins that are blue so i don't have to create exactly a color of the skin that is similar but i'm using a color that i was using in the horse to do an element in this skin so that the skin is different but there is something that tie those things together so i'm creating very thin vein that i will cover later on with uh, with more paint to make the vein go below the skin so you you do it halfway and then you cover it more with more uh, skin color so the, um, the vein appear below Now I'm showing you some real-time footage of how I, I paint. I'm sorry the, um, the mixing colors are out of camera, but I, I think you can, you can guess what I did. It's between the blue, the shiny skin tone and the bone khaki to create a grayish highlight color. A color that is similar to one I used in the horse, actually, so... And now I'm placing stronger highlights. As you can see, I'm moving the brush perpendicular to the surface, first of all, and I'm not creating streaks. I'm avoiding streaks at all cost. I'm creating swirls, some hatching, some points, never a linear brush stroke. And making more visible all the all the bones in the in the sculpt because I like this feeling of, of this evil and dead. So I wanted it to be very obvious what it is.
This is actually my favorite part to, to do the last highlights, the last little details. It's, uh, it's super fun for me. One important thing about using the um, Josonia Magic Mix is that it makes the, um, the colors a little bit glossy and I like the glossiness in the skin tones. So th this is why I'm using it also because it creates transparencies and uh, I wanted to have a lot of variations inside the skin tone even if it is an undead one. So it's very useful, but it's not a thing that I use in every surface. It's a, it's a tool that I use when I want a surface more, uh, more glossy than the others. I do play with difference in glossiness a lot. In, if you see my pieces in person, they have the different finish in every part. And this is why I don't varnish my models in the end, because they need to have different finish. But, you know, being models for display, they will not be touched, they will have a plint. It's not like a gaming figure. In the gaming figures, yes, it uh, doesn't matter much. It's better to varnish and preserve the work. I couldn't show you all the parts of the skin because it took so long to, to make. <laughs> I really worked a lot of hours on this. So I showed you mostly the back because it was the more, the more easy to show. And I hope you, you enjoy it. Different enough, but still similar. Okay, the skin is done. Next chapter we will make the non-metallic metal and the finishing touches to the model. So bear with me for another chapter of goodness of painting. If you like what I do and you want to support my channel, there is a Kickstarter in the description. You can support us and me by participating there. There are a lot of miniatures, paints, tutorials and such. So I hope you like it. Give it a look and see you in the next episode. Thank you.